Okay, we learned about this system in our last video. Power comes from the battery, works it straight through the system, and gets to the coil. Whatever the power is in the battery is the power my coil is going to get to try to operate. Okay, it's a cold winter morning. There's snow, there's ice. I go out and I try to engage the starter and get this motor to start, and I start at 12 volts and I fall off to 11, to 10, to 9, perhaps even lower. At that point, this coil will not function. This car's not going to start. We have a problem. What we need is a coil that can function under those conditions. Now, remember this coil here? I showed you there were 3 ohms of resistance. In fact, it's marked as a 3 ohm coil. This coil looks the same from the outside, but it's different inside. It has a different set of windings. And remember, this one was 3 ohms. Let's see what happens with this coil when I connect this one up to the ohmmeter. And you notice she's settling in at around 1.3, 1.4, somewhere in that range there. This is commonly called a 1.5 ohm coil. And again, that's going to vary according to the temperature inside here. But you get the point, okay? This has roughly half the resistance of the first one. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put a 1.5 ohm coil into this car instead of a 3 ohm coil. What will that do? Well, let's do the math again. Okay, remember that resistance times amperage equals volts. Okay, resistance, it's a 1.5 ohm coil. Amps, we don't know yet because I haven't figured it. And instead of 12 volts, I'm going to give it 8.5 volts. I'm going to assume that this battery is down by about one third. Okay, she's cranking and it's cold, so she's down. Now, I do the math 1.5 times something has to equal 8.5, and the answer is 5.67 amps. Let's take that 5.67 amps and put it into our second value. Now, amps times volts equals watts. 5.67 amps times 8.5 volts equals 48.2 watts. Again, we're just above right where a 50 watt headlight would be. This coil operating at half the voltage, or, eight, or one third, two thirds of the voltage, excuse me, is going to produce the kind of firepower that I needed when I was working with my other coil. So this, when the motor is struggling, the voltage is falling down, this coil is going to do the job. This coil is going to allow us to be able to make it work. Now, what have we done? We've taken a system which was not going to function when the temperature fell because the battery would start falling down. We've changed the coil to a 1.5 ohm coil and we've produced a system which will now be able to fire. This engine will fire when it's cold. Now, I can see where you're going in your mind. You're saying to yourself, okay, that's great. When we're down around 8 or 9 volts, this is going to be great. But what's going to happen to this coil once this motor starts and the voltage begins to climb back up to the top again? What happens when this gets to 12 volts? Well, that's an excellent question. When that gets up to 12 volts, we're going to get into trouble. We take this. Remember, we've got a 1.5 ohm coil. We don't know the amperage yet. And she's going to go up to, say, 12.6 volts. It's, she's recovered herself. That's going to be 8.4 amps are going to roll through this coil. Amps times volts equals watts. 8.4 amps times a 12 volt, 6 volt battery is going to give us 105.8 watts. That's double your 50 watt headlight. Twice the energy is going to be going through this. Okay? If you could ever touch the 100 watt light bulb, they're too hot to touch. You'll burn yourself. With 100 watts plus going through this, this is going to become too hot. The parts inside are going to melt from the heat. The points, if they're connected, are going to melt from the heat. The condenser is going to die early. If you've got an electronic ignition system tied to this coil when that happens, it's going to die early. And when the car goes into charge mode and the voltage starts climbing to 13, 14 volts or more, this will ease get more than 118 watts. That's guaranteed destruction for this. So now the problem is simple. How are we going to get a coil that's going to allow us to start when it's cold and still survive in here when this motor comes to life and she's running? In our next video, we'll see the solution to that. I'll give you a hint. It's a ballast resistor.